Okay, so career resource management is kind of the topic that we're discussing uh, as far as ways to think about risks, mitigate risks. So I would ask each of you, what are some modifiable ways that we can mitigate risk? So anybody have any ideas? Um, I would say that um, for me, some modifiable ways that I guess I can re um, reduce risk would be um, just getting enough sleep. Yeah, so sleep is a good one. So sleep, um, and that kind of includes sleep before your shift, so making sure that you get, you know, Yeah, I noticed piece. I really um, I need to take a nap um, during a portion of my day. Just yeah. Well. Right, so sleep before or during your shift because we're on for 24 hours. Uh, if you get tired um, and you know management encourages us to when we can throughout the day, you know even if it's 30 minutes, um, you know a 30 minute nap can be a huge difference if you're you know going to be flying all night, you're going to be busy all night. So that's definitely a way. What's another way? Um, I would say eating well, having a good diet. Yep. So food and nutrition, that's important. Um, I don't bring enough snacks with me as well. I, I just feel groggy during the day. Yeah. And I didn't get my meals in. Yeah. So many of us, you know, bring food, um, food that can cook throughout the day. That's always a good thing. Carrying like a Nutrigrain bar or some type of protein bar in your flight suit, that's something that's really good to do because um, in the event that you are flying all day, you're not gonna have a chance to eat and then that kind of starts to wear on you. So um, not that you know food and nutrition is like maybe the highest thing, but it does definitely play a role in safety because you know if your blood sugar gets low, if your blood sugar is getting low, then you're not gonna be as focused and you're gonna start yeah. getting hangry. So, um, so yeah, so that's important as well. Um, anything else? Um, I would say maybe um, if I work a lot, like a, a several in a row, I would say I kind of get a little bit of a burnout um, type feeling. Maybe I have to space my shifts out. Okay. More often. All right, so like back-to-back -back shifts. Um, so most, well, I don't want to say most, a lot of nursing units are short staffed, ours included. So picking up overtime is something that's really attractive in your paycheck, but <laughs> always not the best because, yeah, I mean, we work 24 hour shifts, so if, uh, you know, we have to obviously have space off in between, but if you're working like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, Tuesday, right. that's a lot of back-to-back -back shifts. You know, yeah, you get that one day off in between, but I mean, by the time you get off at 8 a.m., you get home, you know, you maybe have, you know, some of the day to do what you want, but then you have to go to bed early again because you have to be right back at work the next day. Um, so there's that as well. Um, any other, any other thoughts? Um, maybe just um, not only sleep, but maybe like a, like a rest break, mm -hmm. taking adequate like rest breaks. So yeah, so that's, um, that's a big thing that I think somebody was talking about earlier. Um, so it's called a timeout. I mean, we all know that. It's called a timeout. So with the timeout, um, you know, we have the ability to place ourselves out of service for four hours. And when we place ourselves out of service for four hours, we cannot do anything except sleep. We have to rest. We can't be on the computer, can't watch TV, can't do anything other than rest. Uh, and so that's that's beneficial. The problem is is that a lot of people, and I, I see some head nods, a lot of people um, kind of get the perception that when somebody calls a timeout, you know, they're going to be perceived as being lazy or all they want to do is sleep. Uh, and that's that's not always the case. We kind of have to change that that perception and that way of thinking. So those are all things that are kind of modifiable risk factors. Um, what are things that we cannot modify? Weather. Weather. 
So weather we cannot modify. Time of day we cannot modify. Um, what else? What are some other things that we're just not able to modify? Um, how about number of flights? Okay, number of flights, yep. So those days where we come in and you know we come in at 8 a.m. and at 8.15 we get our first flight, we get back at 10.30, we try to chart, we get sent out again, we get back afternoon, we try to chart on that, get interrupted from charting on that, we get sent out again, maybe get back at two or three. I mean, that's, that's the half of the day right there. you know. Um, and now we're three charts in the hole. We've got to try to chart on that. We still haven't eaten. People probably haven't peed. Um, you know, it, it, the weather plays a big factor because if it's, you know, 30 degrees outside, it's freezing. If it's, you know, 95 degrees outside, all of those things play a factor on just our emotional and mental state. So um, those things are important. The other one, the other big one is who you're working with. Um, you know, you, most people get along, everybody typically gets along with everybody else and they work well together, but um, you can't control the number of years of experience your partner has. So some of us in here have 15, 20 years experience. Some of us in here only have two or three years experience in this specific environment. Um, you know, and so a lot of times we have to heavily rely on our partner uh, and the ones with more experience maybe feel like they need to pay closer attention to what the person with less experience is doing because, you know, Ultimately, they want to protect their license and they want to do what's best for the patient. So, yeah. um, so that's that stuff is really important as well. So the other thing that we talk about is we got that, we got that. Um, so the other thing that we talk about is um, fears of turning down a flight. And I know that um, at some point, all of us have probably felt like I don't want to be the one to say no you know we, the, the, un, the rule the industry standard is three to go one to say no so if one person doesn't feel comfortable then they are supposed to speak up and it's supposed to be a flight turned down no questions asked but how many people just to show of hands how many people feel uh, like they've been in a position where I want to be the one to turn this down yeah several people so we have to change that culture. You have to you have to know that it's okay to speak up and say, you know what, I don't feel comfortable about this, or you know, I was sound asleep and I had a really bad dream that something bad was going to happen. Even something as simple as that, it makes it okay to turn down a flight. You know, if you have that gut feeling, then you have to speak up and you have to turn that down. Uh, you have to turn that flight down. Um, so I think that everybody's been in that in that position where they feel like they're going to be ridiculed by their coworker or their partner that they're working with that day. Um, so perception uh, of either being lazy or scared is a big thing. And then what's something else? Um, just uh, maybe some backlash from your management team. Right. So management, upper management from the hospital, from the health system, you know, they want us to generate revenue. Uh, and you know, obviously our nursing manager understands the, the purpose of our job, but not everybody else really does, you know, so kind of keeping that in mind. So how do we, how do we overcome all of this? Um, the big thing is utilizing this right here. It all kind of goes back to crew resource management. Um, and really what crew resource management is, is identifying these things, um, identifying your risks, knowing what your risks are and really trying to figure out ways to mitigate your risks. You can't do that. You can't change those things. So we have to change those things. So any questions? Um, what, what are some reasons that we decline flights? What are, what are some of the couple reasons that we decline it? So I would say, um, so I would say weather is the biggest thing. Weather, weather is the biggest reason. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, again, it's going to be it's going to be crew dependent. You know, there's going to be some crews that maybe don't feel comfortable taking it in certain types of weather where other crews do. You know, right. or uh, a specific patient population. You know, we may have a patient that is too large to fly. So those are some reasons. Yeah.